It is out there, somewhere under the sands of northern Holland, between the tiny holiday resorts of Bakum and Egmond aan Zee. After a long process of wartime research and development, the small Zeehund-class U-boat entered war duty in May 1944. Operated by two men and carrying two underslung torpedoes, the Zeehund caused devastation in the last months of the war, sinking over 100,000 tons of Allied shipping. Their small size, only 11.7 meters long, and rapid evasive capability made them virtually undetectable by radar. Although effective, the submarines were very vulnerable and few crew survived. After Allied forces found and tracked her for several days, this particular example was finally beached at Egmond by her captain. It has remained buried ever since. Due to recent beach construction work and increasing risks of earth tremors caused by oil exploration in the North Sea, the Royal Netherlands Navy feared activation of the torpedoes' warheads. Their advice was prompt and safe disposal. Salvage Major Weissmuller was called in to assist. Based on first findings, a preliminary salvage plan was made and presented to the Mayor of Bergen and all authorities involved. A press conference is held to inform the public about the work to be done. Representatives of the Royal Netherlands Navy and Weissmuller explain the plan. Questions are asked. As usual, World War II items are hot issues. Weissmuller Salvage and two other specialized Dutch companies are contracted for the operation. An area with a radius of 1,800 meters around the submarine is firstly closed off to the public. Even air traffic is rerouted. Special metal detection devices exactly locate the submarine and its torpedoes. In order to access the torpedoes safely, the salvers firstly construct a 14 by 18 meter sheet pile excavation pit around the submarine. The burial site can only be reached at low tide and when there is an easterly wind to hold the water away from the coast. These conditions are rare along the Dutch coast. To help bypass the problem of the weather, a 150 meter long bridge is built from the high water mark to the submarine burial site. The salvers are conscious of the Navy specialists' insistence on avoiding any major vibrations or physical shocks that may detonate the torpedoes. Sensors are fixed to the buried submarine to monitor any shocks. During the building of the sheet pile excavation pit, the salvers have to work very close to the warheads. With shocks to be avoided, a special piece of equipment is used, the so-called silent pile driver. After sinking the sheet piles, a special frame is installed to reinforce the structure. Wednesday, the 24th of April, 2002, Weissmuller Salvage prepares for removal of the sand by pumping in water and pumping out the sand slurry with its dredge pumps. A part of the hull becomes visible. Now, the reinforcement of the structure has to be finalized to ensure safe approach to the torpedoes. Working at two meters below sea level, the welders complete the precisely dimensioned reinforcement framework. The hull appears. It is in bad condition, much of it corroded away. 
so before the torpedoes can be approached, the submarine itself must be stabilized. In the meantime, the solvers finalize their work on the access structure. Today, our naval architect will do an inspection to determine how the submarine should be stabilized prior to uh, dismantling. Pumps keep the pit dry while the team goes to work, gently. The submarine is actually in two pieces. There are other areas of concern. Heavy batteries containing lead and pressurized air bottles are also in a very weak condition. <laughs> but the weather insists on living by her own rules. On the 26th of April, after nearly five weeks of good workable conditions, the weather suddenly deteriorates. The wind increases to gale force and the site has to be evacuated. All people and equipment are moved to a safe place. This is the notorious west coast of Holland. Salvers and seabirds naturally have different opinions of what constitute good working conditions. For four days, the protective structure is exposed to Mother Nature's energy. Breakers up to five meters high make work impossible. The salvers can but watch their work frustrated. Sheet piles driven deep into the sand now wave like reeds in the wind. Weissmiller salvages Dan Kornnev closely inspects the damage. The southwesterly part has partially collapsed and the pit washed out. The sheet piles have sort of been sucked down. It's still in place, but a solution will have to be found for follow-up. The pit itself is luckily reasonably intact. Water is flowing in and out. This should still hold, but it will take us a week or two before it's repaired. As long as more of this weather does not stop us, salvage is always a fight against the elements. Indeed, the elements take no prisoners. The storm completely destroys a part of the 12 mm thick sheet pile construction and the damaged hardware has to be removed. The framework inside the excavation has collapsed and must be recovered by the divers. Inspection shows that some six meters of sand around the excavation has been washed away and the structure destabilized. The salvers have repair work to do. Depth is 7 meters 70 here at the moment, nearly 25 feet. Yesterday we had over 8 meters between the top of the sheet pile and the seabed. Before the northwesterly, the top of the pile to the seabed was only 4.5 meters, so we lost between 3.5 and, and 4 meters of sand over the weekend. Now the bulldozer is moving it back and it's proving effective. Repair works on the excavation continue. Days of 15 hours and more are no exception to complete the job fast.
many sheet piles have to be replaced. The special silent piler technique used to sink them into the sand means no shocks of any kind will reach the torpedoes that are only a couple of meters from them. The wind turns into its favorite direction, a westerly, and sand erosion accelerates. Suppletion at a rate of some 100 tons per hour now runs continuously to protect the site. And the weather forecast is bad. Things will deteriorate further within 48 hours, and the salvers are running out of time. Yet more manpower and equipment is mobilized. Thankfully, the Dutch contractors have plenty of experience in moving sand about the place. Finally, on Sunday the 12th of May, the pit structure repair work is completed and the Royal Navy demolition specialists can approach the torpedoes. Every time you do this, there's something special, real special, although this scene is a little worse than I expected. While the condition of the torpedoes is still unknown, it is clear how the elements have destroyed the buried vessel. Corroded and full of sand, the explosives experts will have to take every care. Work is by hand and with the help of water. Other kinds of munitions than torpedoes are found near the submarine, from small arms shell cases to an anti-tank mine. With all the sand, removal of the remains requires a heavy lift capability. Over time, even fishing nets got entangled with the wreck. Sand supply is necessary right up until the last moment. Both torpedoes are now free. Final measurements take place prior to dismantling. This is the detonator area and here is where the U-boat's net cutters were at the front. If these are moved then the detonator could go up. As you can see it's all in very poor condition though the brass still glistens. That looks brand new. The steel part is completely corroded and that makes explosion possible. We will disassemble by loosening the four bolts and then remove the detonator from the warhead remotely. You can see the warhead is copper and still looks good. Water is used to gently wash away the sand from the sensitive locations.
preparations for dismantling the torpedoes are now complete, so it's time for the salvers to leave the site to the explosive specialists. By means of a special cutter on the torpedo body, we've separated the detonator and the rest of the torpedo. The head has moved forward slightly, which means the detonator is secure and the torpedo can be removed. We'll explode it at sea. We've done what we set out to do, everything's safe, but it was a tough job. The detonators had rotted into the warhead on both sides. But with a lot of care and effort, we removed explosives and detonators. We cut the torpedo on the starboard side loose, but had to remove it with explosive cutters on the port side. Now it's being carried off by a Zodiac to the diving vessel, which will destroy it at sea. We've just taken the torpedo heads on board. We placed an explosive charge and will shortly sink it to a depth of around 15 or 20 meters and then explode it. One more long day of work, and the naval specialists finish their work. No damage to the teams, no dangers to the tourists. It is now up to the salvers to recover the sub. Divers first attach lifting gear. Every demountable piece has already been removed. First, the stern section is hoisted to safety. It will require a deep clean. historical data, the operational weight of the Zeehund was 12 tons. This bow section filled with sand alone weighs some 15 tons. and visitors understandably follow events closely. The Seehund is removed for research and possible reconstruction. Who knows, it may one day be on show in a museum to tutor and enlighten future generations. The Salvas start to clean up the beach in time for the summer season. The removal of the pit and restoration of the site to its original pristine state now commences. In a couple of days' time, no one will see that anyone or anything special was ever here.
the tourists have little idea of the risky work put in on their behalf. The work of the mayor and municipal authorities, the police, the bomb disposal specialists and salvers goes on, as here, generations after the world-shattering events of the past. Their work is not over yet.